pause for thought and join in the barking with Darren Rowe on The Mindful Dog. So it is time to talk dogs with Mindfulness for Dogs, dog behaviours or canine behaviours, Darren Rowe. Good morning to you, Darren. Good morning, Mel. How are you doing this fine, well, it's not actually fine, the top half of the North Island, this, this long weekend? This long weekend, yeah. It would be nice to have been out and doing things, but unfortunately we're in the lockdown the same as you guys now. So, <laughs> Yeah, welcome to the family. It's a great time, isn't it? I know. Um, <laughs> if you've got a question for Darren about your dog, 0800 844 747 is the number to call, or you can text it as well, 3920. Let's talk puppies, because it's around about this time that a lot of people are thinking about getting puppies, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, if, it, if, it, if we carry on the same as we did in the last lockdown last year, um, the amount of puppies that were purchased after lockdown last year were, were you know, just increased exponentially, I guess, a bit like the virus. Um, so, yeah, lots and lots of um, people out there wanting to buy puppies. So we've got to get it right. So what are some things we need to think about? Yeah, well, the first couple of days that you get your puppy, really, that's the most important time for your puppy to make sure they're not going to get stressed out. So, so I've got sort of five sort of things that we're looking at. So starting off that stress-free beginning, really, and, and making sure that every interaction you have with your puppy is going to be a positive one. And that's actually harder than it looks, isn't it? Because you're not going to tell them off at all. You're not going to sort of make sure uh, if they do something wrong, you're not going to do anything nasty to them or tell them off, right? So keeping it really low stress. And, and a really good thing to do is to... Have you um, heard of... Um, it's like a, a gap tool. You plug it in. You know, you know those um, um, fragrance things you plug in and the lovely fragrance goes to the house. You can get those for dogs, but it's um, pheromones from the mummy, from the mummy dog. So how and does that shown... work? You just plug it into the wall and it's it's like the mummy dog is yeah. there keeping them company? That's right. There's, there's loads of science around that to show that it um, sort of really set, reduces stress and anxiety. And, and we've used them for years. And, and in fact, um, some of our rescue dogs have got the collar versions and it just keeps keeps them calm. Um, obviously, pheromones are a big thing, aren't they, for us as well? Yeah, absolutely. So I'd really, really strongly recommend that you put those pheromones, get those pheromones. They're not the cheapest things in the world, but they're well worth it. Plug them in a couple of hours before your dog turns up. And then they're going to come in with all that lovely smell. Because if you think about it, they've been ripped away from their mummies from their siblings into this strange world where there's none of these little rubber puppies running around and no mm. mummy dog there. So it's actually quite nice just to um, sort of ease in and gently. If, if you've got a good breeder, and, and hopefully you have done a lot of background on a breeder, um, they should give you a little teddy bear with the mummy smell on it anyway. And that's what that will really help for the first sort of few days. So if they don't do that, then... Um, they need to start looking at their processes to do that because that really helps you settle the puppy in. Um, and then get a crate, crate, a crate and a pen system. Don't just put your puppy on the floor and let them run around the whole house and you're asking for trouble. Give them a really nice small area to be. Just make them feel a bit more comfortable. Okay. And, and don't, yeah, don't be over the top with them first day. Just let them find their own feet. You know, don't be fussing them too much. <clears throat> a lot of stress. <laughs> Which is difficult because you've got a puppy, you want to play with it. Yeah, that's right. But, you know, it's a huge change, isn't it? Moving away from what everything they know to something new. And then we just go, oh, lovely dog. And we throw them around. And, yeah, just let them be a little bit. Let them find their own feet a little bit. And um, then they'll be really confident the next day, definitely. How much should you expect to be awake at night with a new puppy? Oh, pretty much a bit like a baby. So, <clears throat> um we we set our alarms um, when we first get pups. We tend to set our alarms about sort of two o'clock and then four o'clock. So I preempt my dog's time when they're going to go to the toilet because I know they're going to need to go to the toilet. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if, you know, don't don't expect yourself to get lots of sleep when you've got a new puppy. Don't get annoyed by it. You know, you took it on. That's what it's going to happen. Just like a little baby, yeah. unless you want pee and poo everywhere. No, because they're not going to really sleep. They're not going to sleep through the night, are they? <clears throat> no. But again, if your breeder's done a good job. <clears throat> oh, my throat's gone funny suddenly on the phone. Um, if the breeder's um, done the job right, then you're probably going to have a dog that's crate trained and toilet trained before you can get them because um, they do that sort of thing if they're a good breeder. <laughs> well, okay. There's lots of things to look for her in a good breeder here by the sounds of things, and I'm yeah, sure many people are at home now going, hang on, my didn't do that with my puppy. Yeah. Well, again, a lot of science out there. The first seven weeks of the puppy's life is so important, and if the breeder does their job right, then you've got an easy time. If they do it wrong, then you're pushing a boulder uphill from the start. So, yeah, so really do your research on your breeders. Find out what they do. You know, get in there and have a look at them. Make sure they're not just like the uh, housing developers who just want to build all the houses on all the sections and not leave any room for any quality of life. Exactly, yeah, totally. And if they don't let you come and see the mum and dad, then don't go, don't buy a puppy from them. Simple as that. (laughs) Good (laughs) intel, good to know. So we need to make sure they have a stress-free beginning. What else do we need to think about? 
So social, there's, there's two things we need to look at with the puppy, and they're the most important things. And, and everything else, the, the sitting and doing paws and stuff like that, you know, that can wait. You need to socialise, right? Um, eight to 12 weeks, that's all you've got. That, that couple of weeks, what, four weeks there, that's all you've got, really, to make sure that they are 100% okay with other people and other dogs particularly puppies but let's focus on the dog let's focus on the people because most most dogs get rehomed because they're been aggressive to people and they bite people right so eight to twelve weeks that's your window really easy to do obviously not in lockdown but really easy to do otherwise right you just get people to come over and you do this little game so um you have lots of treats and you get the person you put the puppy on the lead so they're not jumping everywhere and you get the person to touch their collar and give them a treat touch the left ear give them a treat Touch their right ear, give them a treat. Touch their nose, give them a treat. You can see where I'm going. Touch the front paw, left and right. Touch the back paw, left and right tail. Every time you touch something, you give them a treat. What that's going to do is your puppy's going to just suddenly realize that every time anybody touches them, they get a treat. People are great. Get the kids to do it. Get the adults to do it. Get granny to do it. Everybody. And as a puppy, they'll, they'll just lap it up. If they back away, that's probably because the breeders haven't done their job properly and you might just need to then step it up a little bit right? and do a bit more training around that. But generally speaking, most puppies at eight weeks old are quite happy to, to say hello to people. You just need to keep it there. It's when they get to sort of 12 weeks and they haven't done that, then they get scared. Right, so you've got to do all this early to make it easy for yourself later on. Yeah. Oh, look, if... if Every behavioural issue I ever have, ever, is down to the fact that that dog's, for whatever cause, for either they haven't done it or they've got the dog later, hasn't been socialised like this when it comes to people, guaranteed. So, and it's such a simple game to do, it really is. such an easy way to get, you know, to, to stop problems happening. Just touch touch the collar, give a treat. Touch the nose, give a treat. So on and so on. Touch the mouth, give a treat. Yeah. Okay. Dogs are going to love it. They're going to get loads of food. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Who wouldn't? Yeah. And then the other big thing is you've got, um, it's called habituation, not socialisation. Obviously, that's a puppy thing, but we're not going to worry too much about that. Puppies can play quite happily. Um, but the other thing is noises and skateboards and things like that. So um, getting the dog okay, desensitising them, I think is the best word to use, um, towards skateboards, towards bikes, anything that's in their normal life that they're going to see, they'll start to habituate towards them. It'll just become habit seeing them and they won't get scared. But you've actually got to work on that. Noise is a real hard one because they don't necessarily, um, they're not necessarily able to place where the noise comes from. Mm-hmm. So they get quite scared. So what you can do is you can go to YouTube. There's some great um, uh, little videos on YouTube that you can just listen to the sounds of fireworks and things like that. And what you do is you, you play these sounds really low and you just give the dog lots of treats so they can hear the sounds and maybe feed them and that kind of stuff. So they're just in the background. And then over a space of maybe a week, you just make those sounds slightly louder, slightly louder, slightly louder. And if you do it at this age, then the pup's just going to go, oh, it's just normal fireworks. And then obviously fireworks you would take really loud in the end of the space of maybe three or four weeks. Car noises maybe not as loud and so on and so on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the dogs just get used to them and they don't care. The first things if you're in a if you're in a town, car noises, kids screaming, babies, fireworks, all those kind of things that they're gonna see when they get older, if they can hear when they're younger and just be okay with it, then they're not gonna get scared. Our puppies will sit outside now watching the fireworks, they love it. Wow. I'm not scared of it, it at all. It is quite and something. because you did that as a puppy. On this train yeah. of thought, there is a question that's come in. Uh, what is the best way to train a puppy to not pull on the lead? So with puppies on leads, um, we don't really even worry too much about lead training with puppies. We just get them to want to follow us. The thing about lead walking is all about following. So we just teach them to follow. And when they come into that heel position, we give them treats and we, and we play with them. And we make the position on the side really fun to be, but with no lead. Once they're just following us off lead and they're just walking around and, and then they're getting their treats in that heel position, then we pop the lead on, but we let it just fall to the floor. Mm-hmm. But we're never in a rush to take our dogs outside um, walking down the streets until they know how to walk. We're always in a rush to get our puppies out to walk them. But actually, let's train them how to walk first and then take them out. And that way, they're not going to stress us out or stress themselves out. Mm. So, yeah, so teach, teach our heel position. Right. Definitely. Okay, I hope that answers your question. So with the owning the puppy, so you desensitise them to noise and, and other things as well, what, is, what else do you need to do to make sure that your puppy is really set up for life? Yeah, so, so then you can start, so, so we, we've socialised, and, and, and probably for that 8 to 12 weeks, that's all I'm going to focus on is that, that noise stuff, the skateboards, all those kind of things, and then the, the socialisation, okay? And if I can do puppy preschool at that time, even better, because then I can socialise with puppies, yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, then I'm going to start looking at 
training and I'm never going to use punishment based training for a dog anyway but particularly a puppy because it's going to it's just going to affect their mental health really quickly, yeah, because they don't they don't know they're doing anything wrong. Mm. So when a dog's jumping up me, I'm never going to push them down and tell them off because they don't know that they're doing anything wrong there. They just think that's something that we like. So I'm always going to start looking at positive-based um, behaviours. And there's a couple there that you want to possibly look at, marker training and clicker training, and do as I do. And do as I do is a really cool one where you do the behaviour and then you say to your dog, have a go, <laughs> and they copy you. And it sounds crazy, doesn't it, that a dog would do that, but that's actually how they learn in their litter and through other dogs. They watch other dogs and then they learn the same as us. So it's not as crazy as it sounds, really. A lot of research again around that one. Um, I would have a little um, look on Amazon. There's some great books on clicker training. Um, Susan Garrett, um, uh, was it Karen Pryor? Mm-hmm. Some really good stuff out there for clicker training. Um, and it's all really positive based. So your puppy's going to get a really good experience. It's going to build their confidence to try new things. And that's what we really want the dog to do. We don't want the dog to get scared of trying something new in case they get told off for doing it wrong. Because that's a horrible way to live, isn't it? Okay. So yep, that's four that things that we need to think about. It'd be an awful way to live. So what's the final thing that you need to be thinking about when you're buying right, so a puppy? Final, yeah, so the final thing is something that we then need to um, bring in slowly, I guess, um, but make sure we've got time to actually to do it right. So it's about teaching the dog how to play, yeah, because play is so powerful. If you think about, um, I did, uh, I was a fully trained teacher before this, and I did... Um, um, started looking a lot about early learning mm-hmm. and everything that young kids learn through is play. And it's the same for dogs. If we can bring everything in through play, then the dogs are going to learn it in context, in that social context, which is really important. And there's a whole lot of different signals that dogs need to learn when they're playing. And they don't necessarily learn them with puppies. They practice them. They don't necessarily learn how to do it. So we need to have an older dog as a role model um, quite often, but you've got to make sure you've got the right dog. Don't go just grabbing any dog off the street. Make sure it's a really nice older dog yeah and then they'll start to teach them those signals and the reason we need to learn all those signals is when they get older if they make a mistake other dogs aren't likely to then tell them off and, and try and attack them because they're just puppies if that makes sense but if they've learned those signals they're not it's not going to escalate into aggression mm-hmm. a lot of evidence that if puppies don't get to play when they're young then they'll become aggressive dogs when they get older because they just escalate too quickly and don't turn off that makes sense there's such a lot yeah. of things to be thinking about and it's all in that space of 8 to 16, 18 weeks. Okay, so it, I don't think people realise it's so important that first sort of six weeks. And most six weeks just gone by. I mean, what, we've been in lockdown longer than that. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah we have. Let's <laughs> so, not talk about that. Um, so with the puppy stuff that you've just gone through now, if people are thinking about getting a puppy, thinking, crikey, well, we're picking ours up next week, is there anywhere that you have this all written down so they don't have to be frantically taking notes and trying to read their writing later on? Yeah, so so I'll be putting out a blog on this one. Um, it will come out in the next um, sort of day or two. And um, the other thing is that we are just about to release an, an online puppy school, um, which people might like to uh, join in where um, we'll be running. We've got lots of videos and online stuff um, and an online course, but it's actually going to be me meeting up with you guys once a week and talking about all these different things and giving you the opportunity to ask questions. Very good to so, know. So that might be something you could look at. That'll be advertised on the Facebook page and the website. We're putting that, that's, um, putting that up this week. Um, so that's definitely something that you might want to be thinking about because um, then you get a chance to ask a dog trainer these questions <laughs> without Absolutely. going on the radio. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Darren, yeah. thank you so much. Always a pleasure and good luck getting out of lockdown. Darren Rowe, Mindfulness for Dogs, the Facebook page or the website. You can go and check it out and there will be a blog out soon about the power of play and puppies and how you actually go about training them to uh, set them up for their life more than you might have thought. You've been listening to Darren Rowe on The Mindful Dog giving our canine friends a voice throughout the world. To find out more about what we do, visit our website at www.mindfulnessfordogs.com.